views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Conscious Creation with actress, author, and healer, Dee Wallace. If you want to take charge of your life, really take charge of your life, the next hour will be a fun, enlightening experience in creating the life you want. Whether it's money, health, success, or relationships, join Dee in celebrating the power of you and see your life expand into joyful creation. To join Dee now, call 319 527-6305. And don't forget, D can also be heard on BBS Radio, iTunes, the Empowerment Channel at the Connect Me Radio Network. You can also hear D on Get Inspired Media Network, Transformation Talk Radio, UBN, Universal Broadcasting Network, plus News for the Soul Broadcasting. And now, here's D. Hello, all you amazing, fabulous, incredible, magnificent, so very loved and darn sexy people. Oh my gosh, are you hanging on? I'm hanging on. I'm hanging on. And then I remind myself to create and I come back and then I get to the place where I'm hanging on. And then I remember I have to create. As long as we're in creation, we're good. We're in control. We're in our power. When we allow ourselves and our attention to be taken by fear or confusion or the collective consciousness mania that's going on. We move out of creation and then we're not happy. So the channel wants to talk to you today about the I am presence. All of this work is based on the I am presence. God said, I am that I am. In other words, I have to say I'm God if I'm God. So what is our I am presence? Your I am presence is the power of you. And you use the power of you to define your definition and action of creation. So how you direct the power of your choice, how you define you, or who you are through your own choice and direction. That's your I am presence. So your I am presence is the power of creation, and you get to choose what to do with that power of creation. I'm telling you, the this work that we're doing with the little child within is more powerful than I ever imagined. It's bringing forward all kinds of things, um, expansion and breakthroughs. And there is information being delivered right now that most of it, well, they're saying, correcting me, all of us are kind of living in this circle. And I want to give you two examples of that of how you turn back onto yourself to keep creating this pattern. One client that I worked with this week uncovered this circle. I want to be loved, but love means I have to leave what I love. So I rebel against love which closes my heart to love, but I want to be loved. So if you see that in an entire circle, you see why that particular person keeps playing out the same pattern. So see it in a circle that's connected as I read it. I want to be loved, but they had an experience early in life that said love means I have to leave what I love or whom I love 
So I want to be loved, but I have to leave what or someone that I love. So I rebel against love because I don't want to leave what I love, which closes my heart to love and keeps me from being loved. Okay. This is a circle my uh, brother and sister-in-law were out this week. And this is a big circle that we uncovered around the essential tremors that quote unquote runs through the family. And you know what my channel says about that. Um, basically, anything genetic is an idea that has passed, been passed down through your energy systems. You can accept it or not. But most of us don't understand we have that right to accept it or create something differently. So here's the circle we uncovered. I want to choose, but I'm not in control. So someone or something has control over me, so I can't choose, but I want to choose. So... You can see how we get to the belief that we can't choose, and then we go, well, why can't I choose to create my life the way I want it to be, right? So that takes me to sense memory. And if you were on uh, the webinar with Dr. Shannon Wilson, you remember about sense memory that the body reacts before the brain even knows what's happening it's the best way metaphor example of that i should say is fight or flight you see danger your body reacts before your brain ever tries to figure it out okay so we have a physical sense memory that we cannot execute our own choice because we're living in the perspective that we are not in control and somebody or something has control over us. So if that is the underlying core belief, it's going to make the intention of expansion and creation a lot more daunting, you're going to have a lot more in your way. So <clears throat> that led to the channel guiding us to all claim this today. The disintegration, which is the removal or the separation of all of the little child's false, fearful, incorrect perceptions and beliefs for the little child on all dimensions and in all time-space continuums. So any time we have ever existed anywhere and our little child from that energy place has still retained and carried through to us false, limiting, fearful, incorrect perceptions and beliefs that are holding us back in any and every subject of our life. We direct ourselves to be clean of those energies, beliefs, false, fearful, incorrect perceptions. We know that we have control over our own creation. We know that our I am presence follows the direction and the definition that we choose. And we choose now to be separate and complete from all limiting beliefs, false, fearful, incorrect perceptions and beliefs from our little children 
any time, anywhere they have ever existed. Who I am now is standing in my knowing that my I am presence is all powerful for me and I get to choose. And so it is. Okay, so right before the show, I was not feeling very happy. Now, when I'm not happy before this show, something's trying to get my attention. So I sat down here and I said, it's true, I'm feeling unhappy. Got a yes. And I tested some various and different things that my brain, my mind thought, brain and mind are not the same thing now, my mind thought it might be. But what it ended up to be is all this talk about um, around the subject of the freedom of the press. And I, I knew that I was getting engaged. I could feel the emotional engagement whenever I read what's up and what's going on. And I want to say to everybody, or the channel, I'm sorry, I'm being corrected. The channel wants to say to everyone, freedom of the press equals freedom of choice. And if you do not have freedom of choice, you live in a dictatorship. However, the message to us that's important today is are you giving yourself freedom of speech and choice? Or has part of you become a dictator over yourself? Are you saying exactly what you want to say to yourself and to the people in your life and to God? Are you stating your truth? Do you live every minute of your life in honoring your choice? Or do you give your choice away? Interesting thing that it led me to this morning. Because I want you to understand that what is going on in our world today is an enlargement of what's going in on within all of us. Where do we get to be truthful? Where do we get to speak our truth? Where do we get to say, this is my choice and this is who I am. And I am stepping forward every moment of my life to express that. So this week I invite you to be consciously and consistently aware of where you are not honoring your choice and where you are not honoring what you want to say. And we are, with that, going to the calls. I'm going to start with Gabby in New Jersey. Hi, honey, you're on. Hi, Gabby? Hi, sweetheart. Good. Okay. You know, it's funny, like, what you're talking about, because I I haven't been being truthful to myself, because life has been a little rocky right now, and then I just realized, well, I had an epiphany while I was on hold, while I was in the bathroom, and then it's just crazy how you said that. Well, I think it's going on with all of us in little ways, and they're taking me to the core belief I have to give up me to take care of, of the people I love. That's one way that we don't speak our truth to ourselves and to the universe. You should never have to give up yourself for the creation of your life. Got that right. you, may, you may very well have to give up some of your BS if you want to create your life the way you want it. So did you have a specific thing, Gabby, you wanted to look at? Well, um, I'm 
Well, I'm trying to open up a vegan restaurant and, you know, I just realized how I envisioned it and I wanted it to, like, I would like to manifest it this year, preferably in the summer, but if it's earlier, then I'm happy because I feel like I have no control over my life right now because I'm just doing what others are telling me to do. And it just, it's that I, I traveled a little bit and that the travel gifted me freedom over my life and control and being back in America it's just I'm unhappy and I want to create I want to make my restaurant out of love you know Uh, well okay so you know there's a difference between people giving you advice and you choosing to take that advice and people telling you what to do and they're saying you you get confused in that area because of the core belief I don't know what I want so I give up trying and I and I give my power over to other people to make the decisions for me then so yeah. it's not a true statement because this is a statement you made it's not a true statement that you know exactly what you want and there's one thing that's in your way she could give me a song, baby. Any song that comes in. Um, I listen to Sade a lot, so I guess Bleed is Taboo. I, I'm sorry. Are you on speakerphone, Gabby? Because you're kind of uh, hard to understand. I'm going to my, um, my computer. Because my phone okay, so computer. say it again for me. Um, it's it's a song called Sweet as Taboo by Sade. Sweet as Taboo. No, uh, Sweet as Taboo. <laughs> sweetest taboo okay so that's the in other words a a taboo is something that's not allowed that's taboo okay so when i say being successful are those the highest words most complete most being successful isn't allowed and i'm going right to your dad now So what what did your what message did your dad give you about being successful? He was just pretty much I don't know my dad's crazy. <laughs> I don't really talk to my we have I don't even consider him my dad, but he's just more like I should just stick my nose down type thing. Is the impression he gives me and my sister. What does that mean? Stick my that nose I do down. What I'm told. Okay. Do what I'm told. Okay, and that's where you're falling out because when people give you advice and some of it the channel is saying is very good advice, you're flipping your dad off and going, I'm not going to take this. I'm going to do it my way, except when you're fighting others who are trying to help you, when you're fighting the universe that's trying to help you because you want to be your own creator you can't really be your own creator because you're too busy not letting them be your creator so that's where your focus is on gabby are you I mean, with I me that, but i'm like i don't speak i don't have a relationship with my family so it's i i'd rather no we're talking to... about when you're a little girl oh, when you okay. when you were a very little girl that's what you learned is don't trust yourself. Do what I tell you to do. And now you're an adult. You're going, screw that. I'm not doing that. And some of yeah. the people who are giving you advice are giving you good advice. But you're caught in the middle because you're not choosing the advice you want. You're just saying, I'm not going to do daddy's thing anymore ever again so okay well that's what's in your way of really getting this thing up and on the on the boards in an easier way so anytime or when you get off i want you to stop and and just write down all the suggestions and guidance you've gotten and look at it and, and and go gosh Without me fighting the fact that this is some kind of authority that gave me a suggestion, just looking at this objectively, 
do I want to choose this? Hmm. Because you, you see, you're saying, I want to be free to create me, but I'm afraid and was taught that I have to just do it your way. And so I continue to fight doing it your way and I want to create me, but I can't because I'm too focused on you. That's that makes sense. Yeah, that's his, and, <laughs> and we are all doing that because we're our little child and our adult self are fighting each other. We've got to get the little child on board with us and what we want. Wow, my pendulum just went to the big yes. So thank you for starting the show in such a succinct way, Gabby. You got it now? Yeah. Yeah. Be open, honey. Quit fighting your dad. They don't represent your dad. Tell your little girl, we're going to make our own choice. And we might make a choice that somebody has suggested we make, but it's going to be our choice. Thanks for calling in, baby. Thank you so much, Steve. You bet. You bet. That was a lot of clarity for all of us. I'm going to Gail in Dallas. Hi, you're on. Hello, Dee. Thank you. Thank you. I, you're welcome. When I was calling in for this show, I was thinking, poor me, I'm in my dream job. I've got, which happens to be construction, and, you know, the whole male-dominated thing, and they treat you and patronize you. And then as I was calling into the show, went into my heart center, read your email on equality and what you've been saying, and I just feel so centered now. Yeah. So uh, can I ask you about your dad? It's the dad day, I guess, guys. Um, <laughs> um, what did he model in front of you with your mother? Um. Well, he died when I was 11 and he wasn't around very much because he was in the army, but probably. probably How did he treat your mother? Um, I, I'm not sure. Well, because what they're showing me is somebody who bullies. And, and now they're giving me a hoo-ha. Right. So um, a pretty butch guy is what it's. Huh? OK. And. Well, they're saying that is the relationship between man, woman that you saw. But interestingly enough, you saw it through. You saw the marriage almost as a business partnership. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, I would have said my mother was the bully, but okay. That's interesting. I, yeah, they're saying you saw your mother. Okay. You could have defined her as a bully because she had to stand up for herself. But we have to stand up for ourselves because we're bullied. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. have to recreate that relationship at work anymore. Do you understand? I do. I do. Okay. So basically your little girl says, I'm going to have to stand up for myself and be tough and, and be like the guys if I'm going to survive. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Well, you got to change that little girl belief. Yeah. And because when you walk in, Gail, knowing that you're equal, they will know you're equal. Do you understand? Got it. Yeah. I do. Okay. So you don't want to be the girl walking into the party anymore going, um, hi, I want to be your equal, but I know I'm not. So I'm going to be a really tough broad because I know I have to fight you all. Does, mm -hmm. Who wants to play? And everybody that comes over to you will be the people that are going to want to bully you and beat with you then. 
right? Exactly. Okay. So your I am presence gets to define you in this moment as equal. It gets to define you as strong and capable within yourself, not defined by having to compete or save yourself from anybody. So it is, baby. Thank I'd you, be interested you. now. Yeah, they're saying you have to be conscious before you go into work now of really shifting into that. Give it about a week and see what changes because there will be shifts and they want you to notice them. All right. I'd love to hear, by the way, Gail, any kind of shift there. You know, it's important. Thank you for calling, baby. It's important, guys, for all of us in this work, when we experience shifts, when we actually walk our talk and experience the shifts, it's important for us to share that with each other so that everybody knows they can run the four minute mile. We're going to Vicki in South Carolina. Hi, honey, you're on. Hi, Dee. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. Um, in January, I had an awesome personal with you. And you said to work with my little girl, which I've been doing, and I love that. But now I feel like I'm kind of at a standstill with this work, and I don't really know where to go from here. Can you help me? I Absolutely. Uh, the channel is saying you are not at a standstill at all. Oh. But that's a pattern that you have created, and you should be seeing it as soon as I said those words they're saying. That that you make headway, and then you go, oh, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. And then you go to another subject, and you make headway, and then you go, oh, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do now. Is that true, Vicki? Yes, I think it could be. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't want to lead you because, you know, you guys are your highest answer. <clears throat> so... What that looks like, um, what that looks like in my life, for example, is I love to create. And so some things I create are really, really, really successful. And a lot of things that I create hit a wall. Yeah. So we have to find out where the belief system comes for both of us, they're saying. So thank you around why we have to hit a wall. Now they're taking me right to my dad. That was modeled uh, to me through my father as a little girl, big time. My dad, uh, as you all know, was an alcoholic, but he was also an incredible creator. He had two or three inventions. He started the first discount house called Promoto Sale, pretty much in America. It was like an early Walmart. And um, when, like, that, that um, endeavor burned to the ground before they got their insurance in place. He created another um, um, fishing um, invention that was stolen by his partner. So, in other words, something or something always has had to stop him from making it really big. So I'm going to your dad, Vicki. What did you watch growing up? Um, well, my dad worked hard and he didn't have anything when they started. And now he has a huge estate. He has been a awesome creator. Um, he worked hard and that was the most important thing to him. Okay. Um, and Vicki? Uh -huh. Why don't you want to work hard? Because that's where you're getting tripped up. As long as it comes easy, you want to do it. Oh, oh. Okay. You got it now? I, okay, yeah, so, yeah. so talk to me. What's happening then? What did you just see? What was the light bulb? Um, that I 
expect it to come easily and wonder why it just doesn't happen after a day or two. Uh huh. Uh, and then you stop creating. You see. Oh. Your little yeah. girl is going. Oh, I remember. We have to work really, 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 really hard. And she didn't yeah. like that. She didn't right. like daddy working really, 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 really hard. Are you aware of that? I, yes. Okay. I am. Okay. So how about we shift it from working really, 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 really hard to choosing to create? Okay. Okay. Now that should help get your little girl on board. Every time you feel like I'm stuck or you're pulling yourself back, go, you know what? I don't have to do this, but I can choose to do this. Do I want to do this? Do I really want it? Okay. So I was not going to bring this up. And when I tested it before the show, they told me not to bring it up. And now they're telling me to bring it up. For example, I thought I was really serving you all by creating this amazing February special, which is now off, off the books and not available. And it's off the books and not available because I didn't have enough people respond to even go ahead with it. Now, that made me feel bad. Uh, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm like, doing the victim thing here, but I'm, I want to be truthful about how it made me feel. And so I got a couple of my healing partners on that, you know, we call each other when there's big stuff up for us because we want to make sure we're out of the, the way of our own testing. Mm -hmm. And they both got the same thing that people did not, because I thought it was, about the money. That's where my mental mind went, that people looked at the amount of money, even though it was incredibly um, low compared to what most people are offering out there. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about the money. It was about the fact that people subconsciously knew that if they did this program, they would break through. Yeah. Tell me. And they really? just were not ready to break through as much as this program would have helped them do had they done it. Now, I can talk about it now because it's not offered anymore. So there's no guilt trip to go sign up or anything. But it was a great lesson to me to test is – Everybody ready for this. Now, I did it once before, and people were ready. So now we have to ask ourselves, because if it's going on with me, it's going on with you guys. Mm -hmm. We have to ask ourselves, why a few years ago were we ready to break through more and we're not now? And it's all about this BS that's going on in our country, in our political world. Are we, and, you know, I don't bring politics into the show much, but guys, are you going to let Mr. Trump define who you are? Are you going to remind him, uh, let him remind you and your little children of the biggest fears of your life? What are, what's the biggest fear? If you're anywhere from um, around 50 on, every mm -hmm. single one of us had to get under our desks in case we were bombed. That's one of the biggest fears of our little children. And who were, were we going to be bombed by? Russia. Do you think this is not reminding our little children? Of our fears. Do you think it's not all saying we don't have control? We do have control. Our I am presence is the greatest presence on earth. 
make sure you are vigilantly using it to define who you are and what you want by the direction of your energy. Wow, everything's exactly. open now, Vicky. Everything's open yeah. now. You yeah. ha- you're in a lot of clarity right now, aren't you? Yes, I am. D- okay, don't tell me you are if you're not. No, I I am. I I, I wonder though, when you work with your little child, do you just do it in meditation? Do you write? You know. Um, oh no, I work with my little child all day long. See. I, I want you guys to be a living meditation. I don't want you to feel like you have to go into some la-la land someplace to shift your energy. All you have to do is be conscious. So, Vicki, the next time you have a thought, oh, my God, I'm stuck here, you stop yourself and go, okay, little Vicki, what's up? Why do we feel stuck? Because we know we're not stuck if we don't want to be. So how um, how can I help you walk through this? Stop in the moment, guys. Teach yourself to live consciously, not from fear, which is unconscious. Fear is a sense memory that you're remembering mm-hmm. from lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes on this planet. Mm-hmm. And the fear of all the little children, of all of our little children, is still with us today until we redirect it through our I am presence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They're saying you got it. Just state you got it, Vicki. I got it. Everybody just say right now, I got it. My little girl, my little boy's got it. We've got it. We're in the power of our choice and direction. Thank you, darling. Feels good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. We're going to Sandy in North Carolina. Hi, honey, you're on. Hi, Dee. Thank you. Gosh, <laughs> I'm all over the place. But, boy, with you mentioning, just mentioning about going under the desk, I completely yeah. forgot about that. And now, I mean, so it was in my subconscious. Um, and yeah, Sandy, I had never wow. thought about it either. The words yeah. that came out of me, I'm going, oh, my God, I never made yeah. this connection. But the channel yeah. made it for us really clearly. Yeah. Yeah. We are in a time that's representing what creation is all about. Is it fear or is it love? Yeah. You can only choose yeah. one. Fear yeah, or love? It, it, it was fear. It was fear. You bet. Yeah. So be conscious not to let anything take you back there now. Yeah. Okay. And when I when when I'm coming out of shock, I usually am very very cold. So there's an unwinding of that shock around that that memory that I had forgotten that I'm uh, you know that I'm coming out of. So thank you. Um, Yeah, and thank your body. Thank your body for remembering that. And bringing Mm -hmm. it to your attention so that you can now redirect it through love. Replace it with love. Okay. So what did you call in about initially, Sandy? (laughs) Well, like I said, there's a couple of few things here. And one, one, and I'm not quite sure which one to, to go to, but one is that I can't trust my choices. Because as I became a young adult and made one of a, a huge choice, it turned into betrayal. And then the next big choice I made was another betrayal. And okay, so I'm so, sorry. We're going to your little girl and your dad. I, it's freaking dad day uh, here. So no, what happened been around all weekend? <laughs> what's be, what's happening? But uh, happened when you were little between you and your dad around betrayal. Oh. Uh, well, he wasn't. Ar- I mean, he was abusive. He was an alcoholic. He wasn't. He was a dictator. <laughs> um, uh huh. You know. But so okay, tale. Sandy, stop. Mm-hmm. Because you know, I lived in a childhood much like that. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. with the alcoholism. Yeah. So, 
If somebody's a dictator, what did they take away from you? My power. Your choice, honey. A dic- yeah, my choice. If you live yeah. under a dictatorship, you mm-hmm. relinquish your choice. Yeah, we had no choices with him. <laughs> okay. His way well, my way. Okay, and that's the first male figure in your life. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you yeah. just put it together, didn't you? <laughs> Bingo! And the light goes on for Sandy. <laughs> And that might be around why and not to bring in politics. And I am Caucasian, but right now I am so effing mad at old white men. And because? To, because they're, they're, they are taking, well, they are trying to take away everything that we've worked 50 years for as women. And just by signing. Okay, so pens. hold on, Sandy. So I want mm-hmm. you to see how this works in our lives. So what you just said to me is every older white man out there is taking away women's rights. That's what you just yes. said. Do you realize that? I did. Okay, do you think that's true? Well, not every one of them. <laughs> oh, so you think the majority of white men want women to go back to the dark ages. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. I am telling you that's your little girl. Mm. That's your little girl saying, see, everybody's like daddy. Mm. Now I want to connect the two relationships that you had. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, right now it's impossible until you shift some of this for you for you to have a successful, happy, nurturing relationship. First mm-hmm. of all, <clears throat> at least with a white guy. Yeah, well, my husband's white. You know, so <laughs> uh, okay. And and there's problems in that relationship. They are. We're not seeing eye to eye right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, and and they're going bully. Is he being a bully? Uh, how is he like your dad right now? Oh, how is he like my? It's uh, he he gets upset when I sometimes when I voice my opinion. He just kind of rolls his eyes like. Oh, uh, and yet here Sandy is wondering why she can't her own choices. Yeah, because every man in her life was chosen from you can't make your own choice and trust it. Mm -hmm. So she keeps choosing men that roll their eyes around her choice. Yeah, so that she continues not to trust herself, even though that's the one thing she wants. Right. You see the circle? I do. Okay. So the buck's got to stop with that belief. Mm-hmm. I I am going to work with my little girl mm-hmm. to know that we trust our own choices. And we trust our own choices because we go to our heart first. And our mm-hmm. heart allows us to feel what's right and the highest choice for us. And then mm-hmm. we trust that and take action on it. Okay. You see, you attracted a husband that rolls his eyes about your choices because you mm-hmm. walked into that room and said, I want a relationship, but I've learned that I can't trust my own choices. So who wants to be in a relationship for me? And he came forward and says, I'll be in that relationship because I'll show you you can't trust your choices just like you believe. <laughs> So you shift, he'll mm-hmm. shift. Mm-hmm. When you shift your energy, guys, all energy shifts around you. That's scientific. Mm-hmm. That's a scientific principle. It also happens to be a spiritual principle. Mm-hmm. Okay? And I know that, yeah, I know that. Well, Sandy, I'm going to leave you with this. To know and not to do is not yet to know. If you are not taking action on shifting your belief system 
and mm-hmm. and helping your little girl heal into a new belief system, then you don't really know because you're still living in the energy of I can't trust my own choices. When you really trust your choices, then you'll know. So I'm going to work with my little girl to trust that I can trust my choices. You bet, because she was okay. taught she couldn't. Yeah. You bet. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you bet, sweetheart. Thank you, right. boy. Thank you. <laughs> what a flipping show, you guys. Katie in New York, you're up. Hi. Um, Hi. I I am taking a test on Tuesday. I just graduated from um, law school. But, oh my God, thank you. But I want to start a coaching program and a dessert business. I think those are things that really make me happy. But I don't really have the money right now to start the businesses. So I think, I don't know if I have a conflict with getting a job, a law job, or mm-hmm. doing what I really want to do. You have a conflict, yes, about all of it. Okay. So we want to find out what the core issue is because it's like, do I want to play with the red ball or the blue ball or the green ball? Gosh, I like all the balls. So you don't pick up any of them and start playing. Right, but I feel like I need money to start You know, my dessert. You business. need commitment before you need anything. Okay. That's like saying I've got to wait for my prince to come before I'm happy. So we're going to a core belief. This page here. I'm not supposed to be here and I don't belong. You don't belong being successful. So talk to me about that. I think that um, my, I think my mother and my aunt are kind of like jealous of me. And I think that they didn't want me to be successful. And I think that I gave up being successful to be loved and accepted by them. Or something uh, like that. That's, that's a true statement. And was your dad in the picture? Um, no, he wasn't around. Yeah, yeah, because the channel just said to me, because the first thing I heard was dad. And then they said her mom was her dad which confused me. But if your mom was, if your dad wasn't in the picture, your mom had to play both roles like I did after Christopher died. Right. Uh huh. Okay. She really didn't play any role. Honestly, she wasn't, well, it was all about her, everything she wanted, not what I wanted. Okay. I was people pleasing her. All right. So now you're playing her. Do you want it? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. you're still giving yourself up and making it all about her, saying she never wanted me to have it, so I guess I can't. It's not up to her anymore. She doesn't have anything to do with it anymore. But your little girl is still remembering a lot about that. And that separates Katie. That means that Katie goes, oh, I want to play with all the balls. I'm going to play. Let's pick up all the balls. And the little girl says, no, you can't pick up any of them. Okay. So (laughs) that helps you move forward, kind of. That helps you move forward up to that wall, that stuck place that we talked about earlier in the show, but it doesn't allow you to pick up the balls and really play joyfully in the world with all the colored balls that you want to play with. So the highest thing you have to know is you're Mm -hmm. worth it and you deserve it. Whatever you want, you're worth it. You deserve it, but you, you got to stop using your mom and your aunt as excuses why you can't. Okay. And you've got to help your little girl understand that she's still kind of locked into that belief system and that fear that if she goes out and creates herself and does everything she wants to do, she's not going to be loved. And the channel is telling you absolutely and unconditionally 
the more you love yourself and do what you love, the more the world loves you. Okay. I think I maybe I was focused on getting my mother's love because I felt I didn't get it. So yeah, now, well, forget right. it. She ain't, right. you know, you have to bring your little girl on and go, I love you. You've got my love now. Let's work together and go out and create a lot of love in the world. We're not okay. dependent on mommy anymore. We're just dependent on us. And we're going to go pick up every single one of those balls and run with them. And then your brain mm-hmm. will be open to bringing you ideas about money or that it will attract to you people that might want to um, give you money to start and invest. But you can't see any of those things right now, Katie, Right. because right. you were stopping yourself trying to still get your mom's love. Okay? Bust yeah. out of that, baby. All your ideas, they're saying, are great ideas. Follow them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am following them. I'm just like, okay, I need money right now. Should I just get a job or should I just do the law thing? And it's like, um, maybe I could just do them all. You can do them all, but you can't do any of them by choosing one over the other. So go do the right. law thing. You've got that right. one in place, but right. that doesn't mean, look, I'm doing five different businesses at the same time, guys. Right, right. It doesn't have to be one or the other. No, it doesn't. But that's what your mind tells you it's about. And what it's really about is I'm still trying to get mommy's love. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to work on it. I just have one quick question. The body book you talk about, is that the book with Cameron Diaz on the front? No. No, 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 no. It's called Messages from the Body by Michael Lincoln. It's on Amazon. And somebody wrote me some extraordinary amount. Not true. It's very affordable. And they're amazing. Never found them to be wrong. Okay. Yeah, I have a fibroid I want to get rid of. And um, I'm like the body book, and I Googled it. Cameron Diaz is for the cover. How old are you, Katie? How old are you? I'm 40. 40. Okay, are, are you, what's up about having a baby? I want to have one. I really, uh-huh. really want to have one. Okay, but you see, you think you don't have enough money. That's just another creation. Don't have enough money, don't have enough time, I don't know how I'm going to do it. And so your yeah. body is making a perfect baby for you by making a fibroid. Yes, and you know what, I keep thinking that. Well, since I want to do all these businesses, like, how can I have a baby? So it's also yeah. that conflict of how can I have it all? Well, so can you let your little girl know you can have it all? Please. Yes, I can have it all. Can and I'm telling baby? you, <laughs> again, I was teaching, acting, starting my healing business. I was 40 when I got pregnant with Gabby. Six wow. doctors told me I'd never have one. I said, you know. You're out of your mind. I'm going to have a little girl. I can already see her. And I would suggest to you, if um, there is a way that you can, I am not a doctor, but this is what okay. worked for me. I shrunk my fibroid with acupuncture. And acupuncture also is a beautiful alternative way, to, alternative way for many of us to get pregnant. Okay, yes, I've checked Again, out Again, not before. a okay. doctor. You need to check with your doctor about anything. I'm reading okay. energy here, but that's the okay. information I'm getting. All right, darling? Thank you so much. Thank you. You bet. Oh, my God. I started out being really cold, and I had to take, like, my robe and everything off during this show. We were, we were on fire today. You guys were on fire today. Please. I want you to consciously ask yourself all week, am I giving myself the freedom of speech and choice? Do I know I can have it all? Am I still listening to somebody else's messages 
that are controlling me, that are keeping me out of choice? Is this an automatic sense memory in my body that I'm reacting to something to? Do I know in this moment that I am my I am presence and that that's who I am through my choice and direction of my life. Am I living a circle? If I am, I want total and complete clarity over that. Claim these now for this next week. Live consciously, guys. We're in an amazing time of creation if we don't listen to the fear. Until we meet again, love yourselves. Love yourselves. Love yourself so much you know you have it all, because you know that's all all what it's about. Thanks for joining Dee on Conscious Creation. Visit her website at imdwallace.com for awesome downloads, archived shows, enlightening webinars, and amazing free offerings. And remember, you can hear Dee every week on BBS Radio, iTunes, the Empowerment Channel at the Connect Me Radio Network, You can also hear Dee on Get Inspired Media Network, Transformation Talk Radio, UBN Universal Broadcasting Network, plus News for the Soul Broadcasting. Be sure to join us next week for Conscious Creation with Dee Wallace. And remember, loving yourself is the key to creation.